a genetically modified fungus quickly kills mosquitoes and may someday be a safe and effective biocide to stop the transmission of disease. Welcome to Microbial Minutes. This is ASM's update on what's hot in the microbial sciences, the Mosquito Beater Edition. I'm Julie Wolf, and today we'll be talking about uh, a new paper from Science, which has demonstrated that a fungus with a transgenic toxin gene can quickly kill mosquitoes in a semi-field trial. And it's that last phrase in a semi-field trial that makes this a very important paper. But let's back up and talk about mosquitoes as a vector for disease. Mosquitoes carry many different diseases of many different microorganism types, but their relationship is often specific to the type of mosquito. And in this case, because this is in Burkina Faso, uh, we're going to be talking about the Anopheles mosquitoes that carry plasmodium parasites, which cause malaria. This is a worldwide problem, um, but is potentially a platform that may be, um, the, the platform that we're going to talk about, the, the fungus, is potentially uh, applicable to a number of different mosquitoes and potentially even different mosquito species, uh, which would have a great implication for global health worldwide. So many people try to avoid mosquito bites to avoid catching malaria. Uh, and one of the ways that they do this is to sleep under bed nets. This is a very tight mesh so that the mosquitoes cannot uh, access you. And these bed nets are often impregnated with chemical insecticides. But these different bed nets and their chemical insecticides have been so widely used that resistance to that chemical insecticide has been evolving within uh, mosquito population in mosquito populations within these regions. Uh, and so as a, an alternative to chemical insecticides, this group has been investigating biocides, particularly the metarhizium fungal species. These are entomopathogens, which is a word that just means insect pathogens, and the relationship between different metarhizial species and the insects that they infect and kill is very specific. In this case, we're talking about metarhizium pingsensi, which is a little hard to say, so I'm going to continue to call it MP, as they did in the paper. Uh, and MP is a natural mosquito killer for these Anopheles mosquitoes, but it kills slowly and requires a high infectious dose, many um, fungal spores, in order to kill those mosquitoes. This group has been investigating how to kill those mosquitoes more efficiently. And to do so, they've inserted a gene from a spider called hybrid, which is an insect neurotoxin. It's a calcium uh, phosphate um, channel blocker, and it's only activated, this gene is um, transgenically expressed within the, the fungi, but it's only expressed when the fungus is inside the mosquito hemolymph, uh, essentially the same thing as mosquito blood. Uh, and they have shown within a lab that this MP hybrid, as the strain is called, can kill mosquitoes more effectively. It kills them faster, and it requires fewer spores to kill them than the wild-type MP strain. The question is how this might act when it's not inside a controlled laboratory environment. And so what the, that is the question being asked in this study. But of course, you can't go immediately from a controlled environment to releasing mosquitoes. Or I'm sorry, releasing these transgenic fungi. And so to study this problem, the group is using what's called a mosquito sphere, shown here on the right-hand side, a picture taken by one of the authors. This is basically like a greenhouse made out of bed netting so that there's those very tightly woven um, strands. The mosquitoes cannot go inside or outside, and they've even separated different chambers within that mosquito sphere, uh, and then can test in a real-world-like situation where there are a number of different factors, including different humidity, uh, temperature, the, the types of in the environment that the mosquitoes and the fungus would normally be encountering. And so on the next slide, we'll see uh, the results of some of their experiments. They collected local mosquitoes. So these were mosquitoes that are insecticide resistant, and they released them within this mosquito sphere. In different chambers, there were black sheets that were either uncoated as a control or coated with one of two different fungal strains. They had that MP hybrid, um, which is that insect toxin containing strain. And that strain also had a GFP uh, gene, a, a gene that allowed the green fluorescent protein to be expressed so that they could identify that strain. They also compared this to the wild type, just MP, um, without that toxin gene, and that was um, encoding an RFP, or red fluorescent protein gene, to differentiate it from the, the um, uh, toxigenic strain. And so they, they coded these different strains or no strain onto black sheets. And those black sheets were used because after taking a blood meal, mosquitoes like to land on something dark. Uh, and they thought this by using these black sheets, they would increase the probability of infection of those mosquitoes. You can see the results in that 
right-hand graph where the uncoated sheets basically had no effect on mosquito lifespan. That blue line is basically flat across. And all MP-infected mosquitoes did have shorter lifespans compared to that control, whether that was the wild type or the hybrid strain. However, mosquitoes that were exposed to that MP hybrid GFP strain died faster than those that were exposed to the MP RFP, just the wild type. By about six days, half of the mosquitoes had succumbed to that infection. I'm not showing it here, but they also looked at mosquito fecundity, meaning the ability of the mosquitoes to have uh, progeny mosquitoes. And they showed that the MP hybrid infected mosquitoes had both a lower number of eggs and that the quality of those eggs was lower, meaning fewer of them hatched to become viable offspring. Uh, and that compared to either the wild type or the untreated mosquitoes. So this MP hybrid seems to kill mosquitoes both directly by uh, shortening their lifespans and by lowering the amount of babies that those mosquitoes can have. So this will quickly uh, be able to decrease the local population of mosquitoes. This is a pretty big deal because both of these technologies have been approved in various facets. There are um, countries within uh, the continent of Africa that already use uh, metarhizium biopesticides to control different agricultural pests. Additionally, hybrid, that protein insect toxin, is already an EPA-approved toxin. So combining these together allows uh, a more effective killing method for the, this mosquito, which is a, a very dangerous vector of a number of different diseases. You can see in the lower left-hand side, one of those mosquitoes that's been infected with that MP hybrid GFP strain, the green fluorescent protein, indicates where those different fungal, um, uh, where the different fungi are infecting that mosquito carcass. But of course, release of any type of transgenic organism, be it mosquito or uh, fungus, does, is not without controversy. Uh, and so in the, the places where this was highlighted, including in the uh, senior scientist, Raymond St. Ledger, did emphasize that there will be no release of these transgenic fungi, nothing is going to happen, without the acceptance of local people who would be exposed to the fungus, its benefits, and any potential risks. And the group was quite meticulous in testing the effect of this MP hybrid strain on other types of insects, particularly bees, which are necessary to pollinate local uh, plants and crops, and showed that there is not an effect of this particular fungus on uh, other types of insect species. Um, there, the release of these fungi in place of, let's say, the transgenic mosquito is something that this group has been focusing on because they feel that the fungus would be more easily controlled than... Um, than the mosquito itself. This fungus is not an airborne fungus. The spores are not airborne. Uh, and it's actually labile. If it's exposed to UV light like that of the sun, then the spores um, are, are inactivated um, and they are sensitive to that exposure. And so it's even possible to contain this fungus uh, in a ways that perhaps mosquitoes who can fly around unencumbered uh, between different populations might leave a given area. So um, with this, uh, we've learned that this transgenic fungus can rapidly kill insecticide-resistant mosquitoes in this semi-field trial. And the group is hoping to take this to a small-scale release to test the effect of this fungus uh, in an even more natural environment. I'd like to thank you for listening and thank Ray Ortega for production. I'm Julie Wolf, and I'll be with you next time on Microbial Minutes.